Major support for the New York Business Report has been provided by New York Community Bank, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chelsea Lighting, Capital One Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Genova Burns Giatomasi and Webster, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, The Whitkoff Group, Greenberg Traug, LLP, m and Bank. Additional support has been provided by Ackman Zip Real Estate Group, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, Bruce Mosler, C.B. Richard Ellis, Colliers International, NY LLC, Cushman & Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, DDG Partners, Friedman LLP Accountants and Advisors, Flushing Bank, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Offenides Centurion Holdings, John Castamitidis Red Apple Group, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey and Ackle Realty Services, New Banks, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, Sterling and Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, and these friends. Welcome to the New York Business Report. My name is Michael Stoller. The condo market is on fire in New York City. So who's building, who's buying, and who's financing the condo market? Today I brought two major developers and a lender who happens to be lending them money. My guests, they include Peter Darcy, Joe McMillan, and Steve Whitkoff. So Mr. Whitkoff, since you're the oldest <laughs> developer in this group, I'm gonna make you feel good in age. Tell me, how do you feel about the condo market? It's strong, very strong. I, I, I actually had a conversation with Howard Lauber yesterday, interestingly enough, about this. He's my partner on one project and selling two for me. And he said to me, if you're in the market today, it's the single best time he's seen in, in the last however many years he can remember. So it's strong, very strong. Why do you, what do you attribute this, uh, the strength of the market to? New York City. New York City being a safe harbor. Mayor Bloomberg, um, the fact that there's fright capital coming coming into this town, uh, there's so many. I mean, there's so many different traction points. So you say you have three projects, Joe. You have how many projects? We have three. Let's talk about your three projects. Where they are, what type of properties they are, and so on. Uh, three active projects we have right now. We have uh, three, four, five meatpacking in the meatpacking district, <clears throat> not too far from Steve's uh, 150 Charles. Uh, we'll be selling in the next several weeks. We have uh, a Tootsie Roll factory we just acquired from Lehman Brothers. Come on, it's not the Tootsie Roll, it's a seller. The seller's cell cell traffic just, covered cherries. That's okay? correct. You know, it's called uh, the Tootsie Roll factory, but it's it a is, it was, oh, yeah, It is called Tootsie Roll factory. And the, um, you know, 12 Warren Street, which we acquired. And I agree with what, uh, you know, Steve said. The, the market right now is a uh, great time to be selling condos, Lug so, luxury condos. <clears throat> so now, since I have two developers who's, who's developing condominiums, where are you getting the money? Are you getting money from this individual sitting over there, Mr. Darcy? Is he, is he, the, is he the, ca uh, the catalyst to do this? We have a very good relationship with M&T. Uh, we have dealt with other lenders in the past. Uh, last couple of projects have been financed by M&T, and um, it's been a good partnership. So why do you like these guys, and why do you like the condo market today? D different reasons. Uh, you know, we've, we got to know uh, DDG and Mr. McMillan. McMillan more recently, the relationship with Steve uh, goes back a couple decades. So we have a, a lot of... As I uh, said, he's much older than all of us, including me. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of track record and a lot of history we have, and we've been really active uh, with the Wickoff group as but well. But how do you... You know, you, these are two guys I know you're comfortable, and you know it was like a loaded question when I said that. How do you look at the condo market in general? Is it the higher price condo market that you feel more comfortable with, which what they're in, that's why we're really on the luxury condo market. Or are we talking, you know, like, do you have any units left at the Miraval? Yes. Okay, the Miraval is a, a great product, but it's a much lower price than what you're doing at 1107 and at Charles Street and at a different product. So we've, we've gravitated more towards the luxury space but we actually finance the Miraval uh, inventory units for uh, Steve and his partners as well. So it's not exclusively the luxury space. 
but there have and, and just to comment on what's driving the market, there have not there has not been a lot of new development. So to what degree that all stopped in 2009, it started again in 2010 and it drips and in 2011, we were one of the only, if not the only active bank financing those projects. So we were able to be very picky and choosy about who we dealt with and we still are. And we were able to get a lot of equity in deals. We were able to get historically better spreads than we would for what was perceived as greater risk. But what we thought then, and I think uh, feel even more so now, probably the best loans we wrote in that space. So some of the best loans are written in the worst times, and that was true for this condo cycle because the stuff we did then that came online now blew out very, very quickly. And uh, we're still active. We, we still think it's a great space to be lending in. Let's talk about Charles Street. Has the West Village evolved the same way as the Meatpacking District? Nine years ago, you wouldn't have done a condo in the Meatpacking District. Well, I mean, my project on Charles Street is the West Village, but it sort of trades on the meatpacking, you know, it's, it sits right on top of the meatpacking district, Michael. But like a lot of other projects, we were derailed when the financial crisis hit. But we owned it very cheap. Um, and if you sort of go to back to what Peter was talking about, financing, I think that their financing today, I want to say that we've got $1,350 break-evens there to, our, to all of our equity. And his financing is there for probably in the eight or $900 a square foot range. That's probably one third of what the market comps look like there. So he's able to finance um, at very, very, at a very conservative LTV. Same thing on the Miravel. I think most of his loan is paid off, and I'm not sure that your senior financing on that deal, because we put a lot of equity into it, was it more than $500 a square foot? Probably down but, to but, $200. <clears throat> but basically so. what we're talking about New York City with the luxury condo market and even in the condo market, it's location-centric. Correct. The, there are certain locations. The Miraval is a unique project. It's right in Hospital Alley, as we would say. It's really, you know, it's a true Upper East Side, but it's truly near Memorial Sloan Hospital for Special Surgery and New York Hospital. Mm -hmm. Great market. People need it. Doctors need that. But if you wanted to talk about another condo project on the Upper East Side, it's not really, people don't say, I want to live on the Upper East Side. They want to live in the West Village. They want to eat, live in the meatpacking district. They want to live in different markets. I think it's a tale of two markets. When you talk about the condo market in Manhattan specifically, uh, there's the well-located projects, <clears throat> great location, well-designed, and then there's you know projects that are in secondary neighborhoods. We've tended to focus and always focus on the well-located. I know Steve does the same thing. In very prime locations, m and is financed in prime locations. And I think that uh, when you look at the pricing, if you look at the velocity, if you look at the number of units that have been developed over the last couple of years in, in, in good locations, there frankly aren't that many, which has benefited the three of us on this side of the table. Yes. So who are the buyers? Are they, I, you know, I did a show a week ago where I had restaurant people, and I said to uh, Eric Repair, I said, so who's, who's going to La Bernadette? Mm -hmm. You know, because that's like the luxury condominiums, the luxury restaurant. And Eric said, um, he said, at lunch, it's 80% New Yorkers, and at dinners, it's 40 to 50%. So I said, where are your customers coming from? He said, my customers, they used to be from Europe, and now some of them are from Asia. So where are your customers who are going to buy these units to take over these properties and help pay off his loan coming from? Well, Charles Street, first of all, we only have 92 residences. And we actually think that that count compresses because we'll do, we have large apartments. This is a 300,000 square foot building. 250,000 net, net sellable. So, um, but we think we'll combine even further beyond those, beyond those 92. That said, I think it's mostly New Yorkers. I think just like, like we were just talking about, uh, um, it's, it's, it's people moving from the Upper East Side, from the Upper, the upper West Side. I get calls, Mike, who, and I can't talk to some. I couldn't, now I have a CPS1 file, so I can, but I was getting calls from a who's who's list of friends of mine who live where I do, on the Upper East Side, and want to make a change. I don't think it's even necessarily that they don't like the Upper East Side, but the West Village is vibrant. It's sitting on top of the water. I boat, I'm gonna keep a boat there. People kayak, they jet ski, they kite surf. It's fabulous over there, it really is. The restaurants are wonderful, it's charming. I, I actually lived down there on Bedford Street, right by the Cherry Lane Theater when I was going to law school way back when. So it's really a pretty fabulous place to live. And I think people search out new neighborhoods. 
That's my that's my that's my view. I pick up on something Steve said that we're seeing across. We have about 15 projects being financed condos today right now, and over the I would say past year, the average size of the units has has gone up. And I think I saw a statistic that they're up about 15 percent in the new development space, the size of the units. And our our largest concentrations downtown in the West Village between the St. Vincent's job, which we're prominent in, uh, your your both of your jobs. But the average unit size on these apartments and the tickets of the apartments has gone way up over the past cycle. So the quality uh, and the price point of what's being developed is reaching new levels. We get concerned and kind of look at that and wonder how deep is that. The, our, our conclusion is it's much deeper than we would have probably thought. But we definitely uh, are looking at the next couple of years when a lot of that inventory comes on to kind of test it. I'd be curious to hear what they think about that. Yeah, we've seen uh, buyers for our products mostly come from New York, some outside of New York, uh, mostly you know nor North American buyers. Uh, the market is deep, and I think it's deeper than what anybody expected. There was a lot of pent-up demand. I mean, Lehman Brothers was four years ago now. And so, you know, in some ways it was very recent. In some ways, you know, four years is a long time. I think there were a lot of buyers, whether they were uptown, you know, looking to come downtown, or who waited on the sidelines, who are now coming back into the market. You know, New York um, is viewed as a very safe place, one of the safest cities in the country. The stock market has come back. You have the tech influence coming into the city, you know, particularly in downtown. If you look at what's happening, uh, you know, on the, on the west side and even over, you know, by the Flatiron, it, it's a renaissance. And I think that it, uh, it's benefited all of us. He, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, John Casamitidis on my show, and he, we were talking about the city at one time there were 140 fortune company fortune 500 companies it's down to 40 and he said a very interesting statistic he said a lot of very wealthy people are living here less than 181 days a year because if they live less than 181 days and not citizens of new york do you think that a lot of the people who are going to be buying and living in your apartments are going to be this type of new yorker or uh, owner I, I agree somewhat with what he's saying. I think there is somewhat of a flight, small, but somewhat of a flight out of New York. It's a, it's a heavily tax burden <clears throat> state. I have no intention of leaving. I personally don't mind paying taxes. I mean, I don't. The city's been wonderful to me. We've done, we've done very well with it. But, you know, at some point in time, you reach a friction point. And so certainly I belong to a country club, and there's plenty of members there who are moving down to Florida on a, on a north of 181-day basis, um, uh, uh, basis. But that said, Michael, New York is an amazing place. And as long as they keep it an amazing place, it's relatively crime-free. Um, they make it open to business. If they do those things, then I think things are going to be fine. I'll tell you another thing, too. I actually... If I was a betting person, I'd be betting that they, they peel back certain, certain provisions of Dodd-Frank. They peel back, and me and Peter have talked about this, they peel back provisions of Dodd-Frank. They cut loose some capital at some of these Wall Street banks. You'll see them begin to take some more space. You know, so there's, there's plenty of, of upside you, you optionality know, You, you bring there. about Wall Street, and uh, Joe recently had been on my other TV show, and we were talking a little bit about a building that you used to own. The Woolworth Building. What is this phenomena? I, I still own it. No, I. You own the, the top. You own the the lower portion of the building. We're talking about the top portion. Oh, the top's not called the Woolworth Building. We pulled the name back. I'm only kidding. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I think, you know, you got me. You want to get the cat in the hat. So what I'm saying to you is. Lower Manhattan is very vibrant. We're going to have, you know, you have part of the museum. The museum's open. The memorial the museum isn't ready. The memorial is over there. Um, the Geary Building is doing very well. Uh, 70 Pines going to be converted, as we said. What do you see? Do you see a lot of people going down to Lower Manhattan? We just bought a deal down there. But for a rental. We bought That's a correct. deal for a rental. We bought, it, we bought, right. but we bought a great rental site. We bought a rental site, 22 Thames, with the Fishers, and uh, you know, at, at slightly less than $200 a buildable foot. And we're going to put a rental site up there. We're going to put an 80-20 up there. Um, and so we, we think the market's fabulous. I mean, we'd prefer to do rental if where we can do rental, and there we can, actually can do rental. But downtown is, downtown's a pretty happening place now. It's, you, uh, you have a property that you're working on downtown. I you, mean, you have Tribeca and other things, but downtown. 
Yeah, we have uh, you know properties in Tribeca, you know Soho. <clears throat> it's all downtown. In terms of what do you, you know, downtown is a series of different neighborhoods, and um, you know they're all different, have different demographics. But you look at the schools downtown; they're some of the best in the city. You look at the transportation; it's some of the best in the city. Uh, you know, the shopping ha has become you know very very good. Uh, you know, Fifth Avenue is Fifth Avenue, but um, you know downtown's been a renaissance. If you look at the population, like take Tribeca for instance, it's probably quintupled in the last ten years of the people that actually live there full time. As a banker, how do you look at downtown? We uh, there's going to be a million plus square feet of, of new retail down there. It's definitely changing. All of our customers, we see a lot of activity. We're financing a new hotel on Broadway for. For uh, 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 170 Broadway, was it out? Uh, for Highgate? Highgate, yeah, for Highgate, um, it's changing a lot. We were, we've talked to Stephen and the Fisher, uh, Fishers about the 80-20, 70 Pine. All these deals we're involved in are looking at. We're open to all of them. We think it's getting better. The numbers, the trend in rents in the buildings <coughs> that have come on have spiked along with the rest of the city in the last couple of months. They're getting. Uh, Sixty dollars in the premium uh, buildings, if not more, in, into the mid sixties for the for the newer buildings. And there's going to be so many more workers down there with the additional million millions of square feet that are going to be developed. That it's difficult to know how how extensive the potential is, but it's definitely more than it is today. And it's uh, we're, we we we're active there. You I mean, finance you finance one of our acquisitions and last yours year. On Warren, right on Warren Street. You look at the visitors down there, Peter. It's unbelievable. I mean, I think I read that it's. Uh, projected to be upwards of 30 million a year downtown, at 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 the world, you know, at the World Trade Center. You have the sites. observation deck that's right. going to be opening. There's a lot of things to come that are going to change in there. Pier 17, the renderings are just changing now, but that's exciting. Uh, it's going to be a much better place than it is today. It's still good today, but there's a big difference between being in one of those cavernous streets in a building there than, than Tribeca or one of the other downtown But it's also shifted away from just being financial services. You know, financial services has dispersed somewhat around the city. It's not just down on Wall Street. It's a huge down on Park Avenue. You have, uh, you know, other areas. Wall Street is not the financial services yeah, it's, capital. It's, I mean, it's not. It's it, not. It, a it lot of people not, think right. it is, but it's really not. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, the, the tech companies that have gone downtown, you know, the publishing companies that have gone downtown, it's, it's a diverse demographic. So, so here's a question. So where is the next neighborhood for luxury condominiums in the city of New York? Is, I, we can't tell you because, you know. I, 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 I know you'd have to kill me otherwise. Yeah. But, but no, where, I, we figured it out before we got on we the did. show. We right? talked so, about it. <laughs> but but, but where, do you, where do you think? Do you, do you think that we're going to have luxury? Um, I mean, Jeff Levine has done very well on some of his projects at the Edge in Williamsburg. Uh, there's questions, you know, maybe it's a green point. Where, where, can, where can we see the next opportunity? Because, as you know, you're developers. You're like junkies. You have to do the next deal because that's part of the mantra of the business. So if you had to take your crystal ball, which I don't have my apple over here, so I can't really think like that, where would you go? I think all of New York City is, is, is open to being... Um to being the next, the next it area. They're, they're developing the Lower East Side today, and they're selling at prices that you would have thought uh, were unimaginable uh, ten years ago. And downtown's getting some good, solid pricing. The West Side, it's just it, there's there's no. T I think if New York City continues on an uptrend, then then uh, you throw a dart at the map at, at, at the map, and, and and things are good. And if it <clears> doesn't, and there are and there are reasons to, you know, there are some, we listen, we have some real issues out there. We've got budget issues out there. I think Cuomo, his, his, um, his politics are very, very compelling. Um, so that's all good. People are going to closely watch the next mayoral election. For me, it feels like institutionally, no one will accept going back to the days of high crime rates. So that's a good thing for New York City. And I think, if, candidly, today, it's the best city in the world. Name me a city that's better than this. I don't think you can, I think New York is a better city than London, than Paris, and everybody I know who lives in those places says so. Those are wonderful cities, it's, but New York is a better city. It is the best city in the world. You see the capital yeah, that's it's coming huge. New York. It's huge, and everybody wants to live here. They all do. They all want to move here. There's a diversity of citizenship here. The restaurants are fantastic. The arts, it's a fabulous place to live. You're building, you're developing a, an office building which is now going to be a luxury condo at 1107 Broadway. There has been a discussion over the years about parks. Now, Madison Square Park was a, a tough neighborhood until a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, and I know Brickman had built another development 
uptown, uh, I think it was used to be called... Uh, Where the 12, African Museum. Right, the African American Museum. It was called uh, 1212 uh, Fifth Avenue. Do you think that the properties around uh, Central Park North have the opportunities to grow and get numbers that, that we're talking about? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think Madison Square Park is, a, is, is different. They, they, they did a, a really an unbelievable job with Madison Square Park. They really did. There's, there's a conservancy there that, um, that we're very involved in, and they've really done an amazing job. I think Central Park North is pretty rocking. I mean, I do. I just, mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I love Central <laughs> Park North. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if you saw some, some real deal development over there. It's, yeah, if, if you look at uh, parks and water, I mean, those are two things you can't replicate. And I think if you, if you want to live on a park anywhere in New York City, you know, it, it, it's a phenomenal opportunity. If you want to live on the, you know, the east side or on the west side on the river, I mean, that's something you can't replicate. I like Central Park North and have been up there. You know, we've, we've looked at some things, and the views are some of the best in the city. If you look at the views you get of all of Midtown, all of Downtown, they're fantastic. Uh, but I don't think whether it's you know Gramercy or whether it's you know Madison Square, whether it's Hudson River Park, I mean it's. Uh... You know, you're bringing up a, a, another interesting point. There, in the press, there's been a lot of articles about <clears throat> 157, which is 57th Street and Seventh Avenue, mm -hmm. and then there's also been discussions, you know, about the Park Avenue, the former Drake site, mm -hmm. that at prices that, you know. Telephone books, as one would say, but since mm -hmm. there are no more telephone books, you know, they're triple Apple phones, you know, over there. How do you look at that, that ultra luxury price, those 80, 100 million dollar numbers? Well, we're financing, the, the loan exposures on those jobs, the financing market has not had to reach anywhere close to those assumptions and adjusting how much debt they put on. So the average condo construction loan is going to have uh, on the luxury product is going to be below $1,000 a square foot. Maybe on that super, super luxury uh, development, maybe it's going to be 1100 and that's where a couple... So we're talking about a loan of 1100 perhaps, on something that's going to be selling for four to five. It might be marketed for three or four thousand dollars a foot, maybe five. So there, it's not there. There so is the bank no doesn't have that exposure because you know you have a couple of sales, you're out of the loan, and there's a lot of equity in the deal. Nor in do the general. bases. The bases are not getting up to the people who are assembling high insights today, and and most of which we've passed on because we just aren't. We're also interested in the equity break even. It's not just our debt. But there aren't there, the the highest break evens we've seen are sort of in the high sort of the seventeen hundred dollar range. That's kind of where people have said I'm willing to take that luxury bet that we're going to get into the twenty five three thousand dollar numbers. And most are more conservative. They have better projects. They'll they'll probably get there, but they're not banking on it. My, my question is, do you believe that the properties, you know, the Drake site on Park Avenue, 423 Park Avenue, and the site at 157 West 57th Street are going to reach the numbers in the plateau at 15 CPW. Well, they have. They have. <laughs> well, at least, have. at least 57th Street has, yeah. I mean, they have. There's no doubt that they have. And what about, you know, there, you know, there's the other site that uh, the same people, the second officer are doing with, uh, with the, the Ofer family, you know, in Gramercy Park. And then what about uh, the UN Plaza? which had been st stalled, and then now they're going to start again. I think all those sites are different buyers, though. I think Gramercy is um, a lot of New York and American buyers, and I think they would say the same as 15 CPW. I think on 57th and on Park, you probably get more foreigners buying. So a slightly different buyer pool. Price Pricing comparable, but I think a diff different taste for different groups. But and they were asking $4,000 a foot and 6000 for the penthouse, I believe, on Gramercy Park. They have been getting traction at those numbers. The UN site's a slightly different site. They reported the sale of the penthouse yes, today. Yes, yes. Right? So what, do you, what do you think of the UN uh, site across the street from the UN? I don't know much about that site. Um, the Gramercy site, I like. You, you know, again, it, 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 right, it goes back to parks and water and easy places to access. I mean, that's, that's real Midtown over there. It's a great design. It has tremendous views, and they're, they're building a really great product. It is more of a niche site. The, the, the people developing that are just top-notch. I think. What about really Brooklyn? Well. We're active in Brooklyn as well. We see a lot of larger sites, so we're financing, for example, Domino, which has been out in the press that we're financing that. Is that going to be a condo? That'll be rentals. Uh, but other large-scale rental developments, when we talked about the boroughs, 
We're financing a few buildings for TF Cornerstone in Long Island City, which is another large-scale development. We're financing a hybrid 80-20 and condo for the stall organization in downtown Brooklyn. So for the right people in the right areas, we're, I mean, the, the numbers and absorption has looked really good there. I had asked John Castamatidis a couple of weeks ago since he bought a site in Coney Island. Do you think there is possibility of uh, residential condominium or rentals in Coney Island because of the fact uh, that it's a two-fare zone or you have to take a fare, you know, you have to take a bus to the train? You know, I don't know much about Coney Island. I, I'd actually like to go back. I would. I went there as a, as a kid. My, my parents used to take me there. So I... I, I That's I, when they had the horse and buggy, correct? <laughs> yeah. exactly. I'm that old. It's scary that I'm, <laughs> I'm the oldest one. But, um, no, so I don't know much about it. I mean, to me, when I, in, in a neighborhood like that, I'm much more going to be focused on rental. I mean, that's just from you know how I how I see things. Um, I think the the you know the condo market out in in, in these neighborhoods. There's just there's just a ceiling, you know. And 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 if God forbid you have a, you know you you have an outside event, that's the first condo market that gets hit. How do you measure your velocity in a market like that? Where the rental velocity is much right, easier. Right. So I, I think that uh, we've given my audience a good feeling that the condo market, the, especially the luxury condo market, and even the Miraval type of product, which is, not, which is a luxury product at a reasonable price, is really doing well. And for the right bar, uh, borrower, there's a lender out there like uh, Peter Darcy and other banks over there. And, uh, as, you know, things are still bright for the Big Apple. Yes. I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.